based on ISO 14001-2014. The International Standard ISO 14001-2015 specifies the requirement for environmental management system that an organization can use to enhance its environmental performance. The environmental management standard requirements are broadly separated into 10 sections. These sections are called as clauses and uh, each clause uh, sets out specific requirements for environmental management system. The standard helps the organizations to improve their environmental performance through efficient use of uh, resource and uh, reduction of waste and it also helps in competitive advantage and increase in the trust of interested parties. The standard covers a few terminologies. Uh, we will have to understand what an environmental policy is and uh, the organization is expected to clearly outline an environmental policy. The planning part also has uh, objective setting as part of uh, the rules. And the implementation is also done. The operational control procedures are to be in place. And then internal audit is part of the check part of uh, the PDCA cycle. And management review is the act part where continual improvement ought to be identified. The ultimate uh, ambition of ISO 14001 is to create a uh, environmental management system that is capable of identifying and controlling the environmental impact of its activities, products and services and also how organizations could continually improve their environmental performance. There are two key aspects for environmental management. One is resource conservation, balancing the resources, usage of resources and the other one is the prevention of pollution. There are a multitude of phrases that are associated with the environmental management system. The management system entails management practice, the emission of gases like greenhouse gases or carbon dioxide and also it uh, or talks about the pollutants or contaminants, enhancing the biodiversity and uh, environmental impact assessment and sustainable development goals amongst others. But the primary process of a management system, environmental management system, include the product services and activities, the core process, their output and the identification of the significant environmental aspects and management of the same. Now let's dwell on the clauses in detail. The first and foremost clause is the scope, which is nothing but the scope of the standard itself. And second one is the normative references, which is uh, again part of the annex is said to be uh, inconsistent in harmony with other standards, uh, the common standard template. The third clause is for the terms and definitions. Let's see some of the key terms and definitions in ISO 14001-2015 Environmental Management System Standard. 
Environment Environment is the surroundings in which an organization operates including the air, water, land, natural resources, flora, fauna, humans and their interrelationship. The surrounding can be local, it could be regional or it could be global. There is no limit for the environmental management system. Surroundings can be in terms of biodiversity, it can be in terms of ecosystem, it can be in terms of climate or it could be in terms of characteristics as well. Environmental aspect is the element of organizations activity or products or services that interacts or can interact with the environment. Let's take for example running of a diesel generator. This is an activity. When diesel generator is done, consumption of power is an aspect and the impact is use of resources. Use of resources is the uh, renewable, non-renewable resource is the impact. Now let's move on to the environmental condition. Environmental condition is state or characteristics of environment as determined as a certain point in time. For example, uh, the air quality through a chimney at a given time is the environmental condition and the environmental condition has to be monitored. Environmental impact. Environmental impact is the change to the environment whether adverse or beneficial only or partially resulting from an organization's environmental aspects. For example, transfer of oil into a mission. The spillage of oil is the aspect and the impact is uh, soil contamination. So the environmental impact here is the soil contamination. But when there is a soil contamination, it also impacts the groundwater, which means water is also contaminated. When it is in the soil, then rain can percolate it and it can take to the uh, groundwater and get the groundwater contaminated as well. So this is the environmental impact. The environmental objective is something that is said by the organization which is consistent with its policy, environmental policy. Policy forms the framework for the objectives and it sets the tone for the objectives. The next term we are going to analyze is the prevent of, prevention of pollution. Prevention of pollution is the use of processes, practices, techniques, materials, products, services or energy to avoid, reduce or control the creation, emission or discharge of any type of pollution, pollutant or waste in order to reduce the adverse environmental impact. So prevention of pollution can include source radiation or elimination. You could eliminate it at the source. It could be in the product process or services changes as well and uh, it could be controlled through efficient use of resources. Uh, it could be through material and energy substitution. It could be use, reuse, or recovery, recycling, reclamation, or treatment as well. Life cycle. Life cycle is the consecutive and interlinked stages of products or service of a system from raw material acquisition or generation from natural resources to final disposal. Uh, the life cycle stages could include 
acquisition of raw materials, design, production, transportation, delivery, use, end of life treatment, and final disposal. So there are plenty of stages from the procurement of raw material to how it can be environment could be controlled through design, how it can be optimized in the production, how it could be uh, reduced in terms of transportation or delivery and uh, how it could be handled during end of life. All these are part of life cycle perspective. Last 4.1 is the context of the organization. The intent is to provide a high level conceptual understanding of the key issues that can affect organization. If the effect could be positive, the effect could be negative or it is a factor for consideration, it's a condition for consideration. It is how an organization manages its environmental responsibilities. Context has to be unique for every organization because the problems are different, the problems are unique. The environmental issues are different for different organizations. So the internal issues and the external issues relevant to the organization has to be identified. This could be cultural, social, political, legal, regulatory, financial, technological, economical, natural and other global circumstances, international, national, regional or local as well and uh, it is related to climate, air quality, water quality, land use, contamination, waste management, availability of the natural resource, impact to the biodiversity, so on and so forth. There could be multitude of things. It could come from people, it could come from the knowledge, it could uh, be set through the process or systems, so on and so forth. We we'll have to identify according to 4.2 the needs and expectations of the interested parties. Knowing your interested parties is a key aspect of establishing an environmental management system. Organization is expected to understand the needs and expectations of all the relevant interested parties. They could be internal interested parties or they could be external interested parties and this knowledge which is gained determining the needs and expectation or it chooses to comply with. Sometimes uh, the needs and expectations of the interested parties could become compliance obligations as well. Compliance obligations is the legal issues could be the regulatory or statutory issues. So once the interested party needs becomes a compliance, it has to be treated like a compliance obligation. Clause 4.3 is about determining the scope of the environmental management system. This is intended to clarify the physical and organizational boundaries to which the EMS is applicable. If an organization is part of a larger organization, the boundaries are also large. So this is something concept which we need to clearly understand while setting the scope of the environmental management system. Then the processes, 4.4 is the environmental management system process where the organization establishes a process approach. There will be some input, there will be some output. For example, the input is the water output is the waste water. So there is some process in between normalization does that converts a 
potable water into a waste water. So this is about plus 4.4 environmental management system process. Is leadership and to demonstrate the leadership and commitment, the top management has to comply with all the responsibilities listed in class 5.1 to ensure that the environmental management system is directed the right path. Top management may delegate responsibilities for these actions to others, but certainly they are accountable for ensuring that the actions are being performed. Policy is 5.2. Policy is nothing but a statement of intent and environmental policy is set of uh, Principles stated as commitment by the top management and it is the intent of the organization to support and enhance its environmental performance. The policy ensures that the organization sets environmental objectives and these objectives are acted upon to achieve the intended outcome of the environmental management system. This would also achieve result in continual improvement. The basic policy should have the protection for environment. It should ensure that the organization commits for its compliance obligations and also continual improvement of the management system to enhance the environmental performance. So this commitment to protect the environment is not just to prevent adverse environmental impact through prevention of pollution but to protect the natural environment from any harm, any degradation arising from the organization's activities, products and services. So it should be specific to the context of the organization and it should be compliance driven. So these commitments, it may be uh, air quality, it may be water quality, it may be a recycling, reuse, whatever it is. It may be related to climate change mitigation and it may be to the protection of biodiversity, ecosystem, whatever it is. All these commitments should take into account the needs and expectations of the interested parties because these needs and expectations of the interested parties also becomes compliance obligations. So organization has to determine the compliance obligation. They must ensure that the operations are carried out in accordance with these compliance obligations and evaluate fulfillment of the compliance obligations. In case there are any deviations, the organization should correct those deviations as well. And class 5.3 talks about the organizational roles and responsibilities. It also includes the authorities. Anybody who is part of the organization's environmental management system should have a clear understanding of their roles, responsibilities and authorities so that they could conform to the requirements of ISO 14001-2015 and the intended results are achieved. So the roles and responsibility has to be assigned, it has to be documented and it has to be practiced. This is all about class 5 leadership 
in environmental management system. Is planning and uh, in that 6.1 is actions to address risk and opportunities. Risk and opportunities are to be addressed to ensure that the organization is able to achieve the intended outcomes of its environmental management system. It is also to prevent or reduce undesired effects and the intent of the management system has to be achieved and the management system has to improve continually. The organization can ensure this by determining the risks and opportunities that needs to be addressed and the actions to address these risks and opportunities. They may be related to the environmental aspects. They may interact with the compliance obligations or it could be other issues and needs and expectations of the interested parties as well. Environmental aspects can create risk and opportunities associated with uh, any serious environmental impacts Sometimes it could be beneficial also to the organization. The risk and opportunities can be determined as part of the significant evaluation or it could be a separate activity as well. Compliance obligations can have risks and opportunities and any failure to compliance is definitely a risk in terms of uh, uh, missing out to the organization and uh, sometimes the organization is required to perform beyond the compliance obligations. You know, uh, something to be uh, related with the brand image and the other policies as well. Other risk and opportunities could be related to environmental conditions or uh, the needs and expectations of the interested parties. It could be a spillage, it could be a flooding, it could be a lack of available of resources or uh, it could be some new technology to improve the environmental monitoring or it could be uh, condition like drought or water scarcity to operate uh, emission control equipment. So there could be quite a few things that are part of the risk and opportunities and there is no requirement for formal risk management or a documented risk management process. So it is the organization that would select the method and uh, identify the risk and opportunities. Here the word used is determine. So the method may be a qualitative method or a quantitative method, but the risk and opportunities identified are used for planning actions and uh, they form part of, key part of identifying the environmental objectives as well. Determining the environmental aspects, an organization can consider the emissions to air, releases to water, releases to land, use of raw materials, use of natural resources, use of uh, energy and energy emitted, heat, it could be in the form of radiation, it could be vibration or light, all these are energy emitted and uh, it could be in the form of generation of waste or it could be the recycled byproducts. Sometimes use of space is also considered as an aspect. So all these has to be included. In addition to this, 
whatever the organization can control directly they will have to bring that as well as whatever aspects they could influence they have to manage that as well so these could be related to the products and services by the organization that are provided by some suppliers as well as the products and services that the organization provides to a customer sometimes outsource product process or contract manufacturing all these have to be controlled for the aspects so consideration should be given to the environmental aspects related to the organization's activities such as design and development it would include uh, the facilities process products and services acquisition of raw materials and uh, operation or manufacturing process store process warehouse operation and maintenance of facilities assets and infrastructure environmental performance practices of external providers product transportation or service delivery this could also include packaging then storage use and end of life treatment of products waste management including reuse refurbishing recycling and disposal so you have to understand that there is no universal method for determining this significant aspects our the method and criteria used by the organization should provide consistent results so the organization has to set the criteria for its aspects in such a way that the aspect is identified as a significant aspect and this has to be addressed so uh, it could be qualitative or quantitative and the criteria has to be consistent and it should consider the legal requirements or the interested party concerns never should a uh, criteria be used to downgrade an aspect which is actually significant so significant aspect can result in risk and opportunities as well as we saw earlier and it has to be addressed to ensure that the organization can achieve the intended outcome of its environmental management system organizations have to identify applicable aspects and impacts that may have impact on the uh, environmental aspects and it is the organization's activities products and services and within the defined scope of the environmental management system there are two phrases that is that are used here one is that it can be controlled and uh, that can be influenced what can be controlled has to be controlled and what can be influenced has to be influenced taking into account of the planned or new development or any modified activities that are part of the organization the significant aspect identification is uh, facilitated by setting of uh, environmental objectives and targets and operation control and other measures to the identified significant aspects so as environmental aspect is the element of an organization's activities products or services that can interact with the environment it could be water discharge it could be air emission it could be consumption of resource it could be a reuse of material it could be generation of noise it could be generation of sludge or it could be recovery of components or waste etc the environmental impact as any change to the environment it could be adverse or it could be beneficial only or partially 
resulting from an organization's environmental aspects. The examples for environmental aspects could include air pollution, pollution of water bodies, depletion of natural resource, uh, land contamination, it could be noise or public nuisance, so on and so forth. So the key steps in I expect identification is identification of all the activities and for those activities, what are the corresponding environmental aspects. Once the aspects are identified, the various impacts caused by those aspects have to be identified. Then we'll have to undertake environmental impact assessment to take into account of existing, existing control measures and identify the environmental method. So this has to be reviewed periodically, at least once in six months, or in case of any new incident or any changes to the environmental conditions, it has to be modified. So, aspect identification has to be a thorough task and uh, it has to include site assessment, observation of tasks, previous incident records, historical data, uh, document or record review, uh, for example, uh, material safety data sheet, inspection record or incident record, so on and so forth. It could also be an interaction with a concerned person performing the activities and uh, it could be a review of the record also. It could be observation of activities as well and applicable environmental legislation has to be identified and the resource consumption data has to be understood for this. Then what is generated, what are the emissions, what are the hazardous waste, uh, what kind of waste management practices are in place. Uh, what kind of chemicals are in use, whether it is uh, handling, its uh, storage practices, for example, for the gas cylinder, how are they stored, uh, all these have to be oil, used oil, and generation of effluents, leakage, overflow, spill of oil, chemicals, packaging, all these could be part of potential uh, aspects, impacts. So the subcontractor's activity also have to be considered here. And uh, any other relevant environmental aspect can be part of the environmental aspect of impact. Generally the conditions are classified as normal, abnormal and emergency and the activities may be a routine activity which is performed regularly on a planned basis and non-routine activity which do not have standard procedures but it may happen once in a while. For example, the equipment breakdown. For example, start up and shut down are routine activities. So the aspect evaluation can be quantitative or qualitative. Uh, generally severity and probability, sometimes scale and duration are also considered as part of this analysis. And the criteria has to be interested party concern or pollution prevention. Legal parameters may also be included in the aspect impact identification. Once the uh, significant aspects are identified, the control measures have to be uh, in place. So elimination or reduction, substitution, engineering controls, signage, warning, administrative control, personal protective equipment, all these could be part of the operation control. Sometimes it could be new technology, it could be uh, modification of work procedures, uh, work methodology and the method statements, it could be emergency response and disaster management plan, it could be task observation or a contractor control mechanism, it could be the strengthening of inspections or supervision system and other relevant such aspects. So this is how aspect impact have to be identified and it has to be addressed in, as per the requirements of clause 6.2. Aspect 
identification and identification of the significant environmental aspects. When it comes to the compliance obligations, the organization has to determine at a detailed level the applicable legal requirements uh, and also uh, the compliance obligation should include uh, it supposes you will have to have a procedure for that and it has to comply with other requirements that the organization chooses or has chosen to comply with. So it could be requirements from government entities, it could be a national, international or local law regulation, it could be a requirement specified in permit, license or consent for conditions or other forms of authorization. It could be a tribunal judgment or a, a green tribunal judgment. It could be some agreement, it could be a voluntary principle or code. All these have to be recorded. Usually this is done in a legal register and there is a procedure established for the frequency review and uh, uh, verification of these legal requirements in a defined time period and uh, that also uh, constitutes the evaluation of compliance. So the compliance obligations and the evaluation of compliance so they are given in 6.1.3 and 9.1.2. They will have to be addressed simultaneously. The environmental management system is highly compliance driven and hence adhering to the compliance obligations is one of the key aspects of the environmental management system. Environmental management system ensures that an organization is compliant with all its legal requirements. Planning actions have to be initiated for all the identified risks and opportunities and these planning actions have to reduce or mitigate the risks as well as enhance the possibility of the opportunities. Seven is resources. Resources that are required for the effective functioning and improvement of the environmental management system and to enhance the environmental performance are to be identified and should be ensured that these are supported and those who are implementing the environmental management system are adequately supported and uh, sometimes the internal resources may be supplemented with external providers. The resources means human resources, it could be natural resources, it could be infrastructure, technology or financial resources. For example, enhancing a, a skill or knowledge of a human resource falls under the ambit of clause 7.1. And uh, for example, the infrastructure resource like building or equipment or a drainage system or a firefighting equipment, all these are part of clause 7.1 resources and it is the responsibility of management to ensure that all the resources are in place and are adequate for the effective implementation. Competence in terms of education, experience or training is required as per clause 7.2. The competence of people has to be enhanced as per the requirement of this clause and this could be through awareness or training. According to the clause 7.3, people should be aware of uh, the implications of not adhering to the environmental management system 
and they must be aware of certain requirements of uh, compliances and objectives and the policy statement as per clause 7.3 as part of their environmental uh, management system awareness 7.4 is communication communication enables the organization to share information pertinent to its environmental management system this may include information related to significant environmental aspects environmental performance compliance obligations and recommendations for continual improvement communication as you all aware is a two way process and it is always in and out of the organization within the organization it is the internal communication and outside the organization it is external communication external communication may include complaints from the interested parties by and large communication should be factual people who are communicating should be transparent and uh, it should be truthful it should not exclude all relevant information and it should be understandable to all the interested parties a communication matrix may be required as part of clause 7.4 this would demonstrate the communication very well internal control procedures and work instructions or requirements of class 8.1 operational planning and control is part of operations the type and extent of operation control depends on the nature of operations the risks of opportunities significant environmental aspects and compliance obligations an organization has to be flexible to select the type of operational control method this should be used in the design uh, it could be in the form of technology or using competent person or performing a process in a simplified way or a specified way monitoring and measurement of process and determining the use and amount of documented information the life cycle perspective has to be considered while controlling the operations uh, so an organization environmental requirements or organizations environmentally related needs and expectations and uh, it has to be communicated to all the interested parties clause 8.2 is emergency preparedness and response organization should be prepared to face any kind of emergencies that may occur so emergency communication comes as an important part here and uh, the mitigation and response actions and the preparedness drill and the learnings of the outcome uh, are to be recorded and it has to be implemented and finally environmental monitoring has to happen in place as per the clause 9.1 environmental monitoring is the air quality monitoring water quality monitoring soil testing uh, water testing so on and so forth i hope all of you had a good time listening to the environmental management system requirements as per the standard international standard for environmental management system ISO 14001 2015 i'm sure you all liked it i i request you all of you to watch the video and comment post your comments in the comment section and i would try to respond as much as possible hope to see you with uh, yet another video with uh, similar sort of content uh till then take care and stay safe bye bye